Hey everybody, it's Matt Fury from Avid here in Park City, Utah. Once again at the Sundance Film Festival, talking to some incredible editors about their projects. One of those projects is a film called Out of My Mind, and the editor of that project is Jacob Craycroft, and his assistant editor is Matthew Buckley. We call him Buck. Uh, guys, uh, we, I've been hearing a lot about this film, uh, so congratulations. Thank you. Uh, let's start off by talking about what Out of My Mind is about, Jacob. Uh, it is about a nonverbal girl with ce cerebral palsy, um, sort of trying to make a normal life in sixth grade. And it's based on a novel, a YA novel that's pretty popular. And yeah, that's the gist. That's the gist. Okay, so I think you guys are the first team that I've talked to with a project that's based on a novel. And something I like to ask editors or assistant editors is going into a project when there is some legacy material, do you find that it helps you as storytellers to go back and read that book? Or do you try and avoid that and just focus on the script at hand? I mean, I, primarily I look at the script because I think that's what they're shooting from. That's the guide. But we uh, we both read the book, and um, and at least and kind of reread parts to kind of see what attitudes from because it's all told. The book is told in first person in within her mind, and and the movie was scripted to have voiceover. Um, we played with that a lot, and then we played with not having the voiceover, and we came up with some visual sort of representations and she has a communication board and we use that and we used Avid a lot to sort of trial multiple things with using the effects editor and you know zooming in and isolating and kind of flashing stuff and it was so it uh it was good to go back to the book to sort of see like where the attitude like because it is so and she's kind of a snarkier in the book than she is in the in the movie um, and trying to like stay true to both what the kids that have read the book and love the book um, like and keep get that into the movie as well as with what we had in front of us in, uh, in what they shot and, and what was in the script. It was really the texture too. I mean, Jacob, like a lot of the stuff in the book that never made it to the script was just things that the family did. And it was really great that, I know Jacob, it was super important for him to make sure to pull that texture in. Yeah. So there's music taste, there's things from the father, the father loves music and it all just built, it helped us build the world out more that, you know, can't always make it into the script, but Daniel did a great job with it. So yeah. it was just great having two sources to pull from. I know this isn't the first project you guys have done together. Um, how did you two collectively get on this project? What, what was it that happened that brought out of my mind to you? Um, so I'd worked with Buck on a project some years back on a feature and he sort of took it over. It was very, very indie. Um, and then we had met, I guess, uh, through another editor. We were both yeah. working at the same facility and then I needed a new assistant because I think you interviewed Taylor Levy. He had, he had <laughs> yeah. left me. Um, so I brought in this guy. Um, and he at first wasn't even available, and then he kind of, he was finishing up a VFX. Yeah, it was VFX product. editing, but then I made myself available because I really wanted to work on this and work with Jacob again. It's a, it's a good collaboration. It's fun working with Jacob. And we were talking earlier about what it was that attracted you to the, obviously you, as an editor and as an assistant editor, you want to be working, you want good material. Obviously this sounds like a challenging and unique story, um, but what was it about this story that, that made you both say, I want to be a part of this? I mean, yeah, I mean, the nonverbal main character, you know, and being in her perspective and, and it's her story and it's what she's experiencing. Um, it, it, it's an important story, I think, because of, for representation and pushing the dialogue and, and letting people see the struggles that, that people with disability endure. Um, that attracted me on the page. And then I had the pleasure after talking with the director and, and chatting with her and interviewing. Um, and she seemed bright and smart. Amber was great. And, you know, everything seemed positive. But then I saw the, uh, when they, Phoebe Ray um, Taylor. Phoebe Ray Taylor. Uh, when when they, I, they played me her acceptance, or when they told her that she had got the job, and you could just see that she just had that presence. And she was so winning. And is incredible in the film and was a joy to cut. You know, I mean, child actor, never had acted before. Wow. Um, she was probably 12-ish, 13. 13. Yeah, but she knocked it out of the park. I mean, it was, all the kids are fantastic in it. It was like, they really cast just to make sure that they got honesty out of the roles and stuff like that. And that was the best part. I think everybody was in, involved 
was just so focused on making sure this felt real. And I think more so than any other, you know, school coming of age movie I've seen. It's a, it's, a Disney it's a Disney film, film. but it's yeah. also very not a Disney film. It doesn't pull punches yeah. at all. That's the thing that's the most exciting about it to me. It's got a little bit of that Disney kid humor stuff, but it's also got a lot of gravitas and, and really grounded performances. And, you know, we tried to keep that very much part of it with Amber and, and working with her and, and all her notes and, and you know we were working remotely she was in LA for the majority of it she came to New York a few times and was there at, you know the end of of different stages of cuts and then she sort of would go back and so we worked with Evercast and you know that was difficult and challenging as Evercast in our new modern video conferencing is is it's hard because yeah. it, you like to be in a room with someone it's just quicker um, but yeah, it was uh, it was great. I mean, everything about the project really seemed like it should happen. And I, uh, anyways, I don't. Know. Well, I mean, so Buck, when when Jacob says to you, "Okay, we're doing this," yeah. and it's uh, it's on your shoulders as, as it often is for the assistant editor, first assistant, you know, set up the post production workflow, set up the environment. You know, what are those next steps you take to get things laid out for for you two and the rest of your crew uh, to be productive? Well, the first thing I did when Jacob offered me the job was I skipped the first two weeks and took a vacation because I already had it planned. Um, but I got to call up my friend, uh, Devin Holiday. I've worked with her before. She's a great AE, and she we worked and set up the project together. So the best thing, the toughest thing for us, I think, with setting up the workflow and the dailies was the amount of footage that was coming in with the child actors. And Amber, I think she, I think Amber and the DP Noah, they filmed it in such a smart way where they let the kids feel comfortable with the camera. It was never like, all right, action, let's go. It was like they were talking with the kids and feeling it out. So we were getting like 10 minute takes, 20 minute takes some days. So the toughest part for us in this whole workflow is making sure we were seeing everything and then that the good stuff was getting to Jacob and keeping it all organized so that when Amber came in, we could be like, all right, we have this whole library of stuff. And we use script sync. That's an avid tool, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, script sync. <laughs> we did a lot of string outs. So. It was, it was just keeping that organization and making sure that, you know, in the crunch that we had, because it was really, you know, it wasn't a large team. It was that we could always pull from stuff and, yeah, keeping it all together. So it wasn't a large team. Anybody else on the team you want to shout out that was oh, key absolutely. to this process? Absolutely. I got to talk about Kai, our other first. And then we had Michael Fleming come in and Tim Squires came in to finish it up yeah, after we, we left. To, we had to jump to yeah. Pachinko season two and we were going longish, so... Uh, we jumped and then Tim Squires took it over and sort of shepherded it to the end and we had a nice relationship and talked about things as they would come up and uh, yeah, the end product is great and he, he stayed sort of very true to what we had been doing so it was... Well, I mean if you got to hand off a project to somebody, Tim oh, Squires, yeah. you know, no yeah, he's Mr. <laughs> Life of Pi, he's okay. Um, again, with these unique challenges of telling the story of the nonverbal character, you, you touched on this a little, Jacob, but um, you know, other than script sync, are there certain things, effects that you can do to try and experiment with how you want to convey the, 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 what she's trying to say? Oh yeah, I mean, that was a big conversation we had the whole time, and it was really, it was a big creative thing between Jacob and Amber and, and myself, and like, it was, how do we figure out how to tell a nonverbal person's story in the language of cinema that we already know. And what was really great is that we were afforded the time to experiment with it. So, I mean, we were testing out just different ways to get inside her head, imagery and stuff. And some of that stayed on the screen, like Jacob was talking about earlier, like she has a communication board and we'd blow that up to the screen. And the, you know, we tested out a lot of stuff with the effects palette. Like how do we make this feel real? How do we make this feel like it's in her head? And, you know, blurring effects, blow ups, movement, sound, all that stuff. And I think, you know, I think we found a good middle ground between all the stuff that we worked on with it. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I, I'm going to make the assumption that, again, that nonverbal aspect might have presented the greatest challenge, but I don't want to just assume that. So I want to ask you guys, what was the biggest challenge for each of you in terms of working on Out of My Mind? What was the biggest challenge? I mean, it was, I mean, there are many verbal people in the in the script, and I think it was finding the balance of like keeping it grounded, letting the humor play, getting the pathos, getting the the stuff that's hard feel hard um, and real, and not uh, you know not just gloss over it. Um, and the performances, the parents are great, uh, Luke Kirby and, and um, 
Rosemary DeWitt are amazing. And, you know, I mean, I think the, it, the hardest part was really not having Amber Seeley in the room um, the whole time, but, but between like passing cuts back and forth and, and sharing, you know, and then doing stuff over uh, Evercast, you know, we got there, but it, um, we played a lot. It was just, there was a lot of back and forth. More, more, it would have been faster in the room. That's all I can say. Anything to add to that, Buck? No, I, I think, I think Jacob was just hitting on the stuff that our biggest, cause you know, I, I wouldn't lurk at us like trying to figure out how to do the nonverbal thing as anything more than just how do we engage the audience more? It didn't feel like so much of a challenge. The challenge I think was keeping it real and making sure we were telling this story in a way that people could grasp onto without jumping into like tropes and stuff like that. But the, best thing we had and it was a huge challenge but we just had so much trust from amber and i had trust from jacob and from the producers yeah, fuck, fuck did I, I i i i mean i was sort of the story guy I did much, most of the editing but there there was the disney elements and buck was sort of raised in that and yeah. i'm a little too old for the disney channel <laughs> generation so he i would rely, lean on buck to sort of be like what do you think is this gonna fly and then like Buck did a little, he did, there's a game show, a quiz show that the kids are involved in. And it's like community. It's like, you know, local, local access. Local public access. <laughs> Actually, that was a big, we got so much footage. We got like five cameras for a few days because they, they go on a game show. So we'd get two of the Alexa 65s and then we'd get three broadcast cameras. So we had these like massive group clips that were running like 30 minutes long because they'd run the whole scene. And it was really getting that together and making it look like it's a public access show in 2002. And luckily, I didn't have many friends in 2002, <laughs> so I was watching a lot of TV. Um, so it was it was so fun yeah, building yeah, that we had, out. We had our in-house uh, yeah. specialist, yeah. Um, and 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 he built out this great intro, and uh, did the voiceover as well. So he's a, although I don't know if Disney wants anyone to know. <laughs> I don't know. He did who, sign away. I don't know who did the voiceover for that. Actually, someone really someone, did. Someone did a really great. Voice. Someone really good. Yeah. Someone really good that's really proud of the film and has been uh, <laughs> talking about it on social media. Who shall not be named here. No, um, no, no. No, no, but you know what matters is that you guys are here and that the film is doing really well so far, yeah, and hopefully, been great. It's been yeah, great. we've Hope had standing ovations, which yeah. is not. I've been to Sundance many times, and I don't really recall standing ovations. Yeah, that doesn't happen too often. I know I've never had one. Um, congratulations to both Thank of you, you on, on getting the film done, getting into Sundance, and also the the huge reception it's getting. Um, it's Matthew Buck Buckley and Jacob Craycroft from Out of My Mind, two amazing people here at Sundance with a great film. Stick with us on the Avid Social Media channels for more great artists here from Park City.